Good morning. The 14B District Court is now in session. My name is Elaine Washington, and I'm the judge that will be presiding over this session. The court will call the case of Your Honor, you are muted this evening. All right, the 14B District Court is now in session. My name is Elaine Washington, and I'm the judge that will be presiding over the session. Please remain muted until your case is called, and then allow the attorneys to place their appearance on the record. The court will call the case, says uh, Romella Mike McIntyre, 23FB1537 and 24S00052, both pretrials. Good morning, Rachel McDuffie for the people. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Edward Fucus on behalf of Romello McIntyre in the matter 1537. Good morning, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Davi Liebel on behalf of Mr. McIntyre on the 052 matter. Thank you. Good morning. Ms. McIntyre, please state your name. Good morning, Your Honor. It's Romello McIntyre. Thank you. And, Your Honor, at this time, I with regard to five or one five three seven, we'd like to set that for a final settlement conference. And the same is also true for zero five two, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. That is fine. We adjourned last time because I had a request for an offer, and <clears throat> pardon me, I extended that offer, which was that Mr. McIntyre would plead um, to the domestic violence count with seven six nine four a on the case ending in fifteen thirty seven and a reduced count of malicious destruction of personal property under $200 on the case ending in 5-2, an agreement to repay $300 in restitution and a referral to probation. That is the offer that is being rejected at this time. Thank you. Final settlement conference in both of these matters will be scheduled for May 30th, 2024 at 11 a.m. June 7th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. for the jury selection. And bond will continue. And it's my understanding, based on the prosecutor's uh, policy, that there will be no further offers in this matter. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Ypsilanti Township versus Amos White, case number 24T, 00006. We're here today for a pretrial in this matter. Uh, Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Good morning, Your Honor. Tina Sachs on behalf of Mr. White. Mr. White, will you please state your full name for the court, please? Yes, uh, Amos Sean White. Thank you. Your Honor, uh, this is date and time for pretrial. I have yet to receive discovery for this matter, so I'm asking for an adjournment within one additional pretrial conference. I have time to receive the discovery. Uh, no objection to that. Um, counsel, I'm going to put into the chat the uh, email that you can request the discovery to. Okay, thank you. Are you available on April 22nd at 9 a.m., Counsel? I am, Your Honor. April 22nd, 2024, at 9 a.m. Bond will continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Have a good day. You as well. Mr. Wait, you're all set. Okay. That's my thing. Thank you. Have a good day. Nice you as well. Two Lady Township versus Kenneth Fortin, case number 23T00790. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Davi Lebo for Mr. Forden. Mr. Forden, could you unmute when you're able to do so? Thank you. All right, we're here for a pretrial. Mr. Forden, please state your name. Kenneth Forden. 
Thank you. We're here for a pretrial and there's a bond violation. Yes, with regard to the bond violation, Mr. Ford will be pleading guilty to that. Thank you, Mr. Fortin. I believe you were arraigned by the magistrate on March 27, 2024, with respect to the bond violation in this particular case. Um, it alleges that on March 26, Two thousand and twenty-four, you were um, called to the police were called to the home at on Tuttle Hill um, for a home invasion, and at that time they discovered that you were in direct violation of your bond conditions, which were to have no contact with Miss Marguerite Turner. And that you've been living with her despite the court's order to not have contact. No, no, ma'am. I was trying to, I, have, I was called down from sir, the street. Sir, you need to talk to your attorney about that. He's denying that that's the case. So apparently we're not on the same page with what the violation is. Your Honor, Mr. Ford is prepared to admit to, to being at the address on the 26th. However, he does deny that he has been living Well, it makes a difference for me. So I guess we'll have to have a hearing. In fact, I have one moment for a brief break in with Mr. Forden. Yes. But while he goes into a breakout room, Mr. Barnett, um, do you know if there's dash cam that would be able to substantiate the officer's claim that he told them he was living there? There should be, Your Honor. I don't happen to have a copy of the police report. So um, if Your Honor has that, at least it has the incident number um, I can obtain. There should be there should be video from that. And give you the case report number. Yeah, that would be fine. 2400-22305. 2400-2325. 2400-22305. Zero, zero, Got it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Lee, we'll all place you into the breakout room with your at this time. We'll call the LaShawn Anderson matters 23W002300 and 22S00658, a show cause and a violation of probation. APA Richard McDuffie for the people. <clears throat> Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Allison Miller here on behalf of LaShawn Anderson. Mr. Anderson, can you unmute and state your name for the record, please? LaShawn Anderson. Thank you. Your Honor, I did not, good morning, I did not prepare a written report for this. Okay. Do you need a breakout room? Or? Uh, yes, if we can just have a brief breakout room with this, Your Honor. All right, thank you.
All right, Mr. Anderson. Um, it appears that you are trying uh, to get back into compliance at this time. So we're going to give you some time to see if, if that is going to happen and get some reports back. We'll adjourn this for 30 days. That would put us on 30 days. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on May 13th. We'll see you back here on May 13th. Two thousand twenty-four at ten o'clock a.m. Your bond is continued. See you then, sir. Keep uh, doing what you're supposed to do so that we can try to get this resolved. I'm sure. All right, thank you. There are additional consequences. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Just so show clock return to that date too. Uh, would it be Zoom? Yes, it's Zoom. All right, thank you. Thank you. State of Michigan versus Shannon Brown, 19S00424. Where can we get the first people? Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Shannon Brown. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Brown. Please state your name for us. Shannon Brown. Thank you. All right, we're here for payment on this. You were supposed to pay $100 on March the 1st. Yeah, I did that. All right. And I... Uh, I think I still owe twenty five dollars for last month, but I'll get that in by the end of this week. Okay, okay. I'll see you back here in sixty. I mean, ninety days, then, sir, if necessary. If you're all caught up, you don't have to be here. Okay. Alrighty, I'm trying to pay it off. I only got a couple hundred left, so. Hopefully. Oh, okay. July first. Alrighty. Twenty four at ten a.m., sir. Take care. Alrighty, have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Live. State of Michigan versus Cameron James, case number 23S00514. For coming up for people. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Please state your name. Cameron James. Thank you. This is what Senator Dobby Leba for Mr. James. Thank you. We're here for a pretrial today. That is correct, Your Honor. Mr. James will be pleading guilty with an agreement to Haida. All right, Mr. Cameron James, it's my understanding that you're going to be pleading guilty as charged in this particular case. There are two counts. Count one is most destruction of personal property, 200 or more, but less than a thousand. That is uh, carries a maximum penalty of up to one year or $2,000 fine plus court costs. And then count assault or battery that is a misdemeanor also carrying a maximum penalty of up to 93 days and or a $500 fine plus court costs. In exchange for those pleas, the prosecutor would um, not object to you being placed on HIDER or there will be an agreement to you being placed on HIDER, um, which means that if you do everything you're supposed to do, then this would never be on your record. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I should have confirmed. Is that a correct statement of the agreement, Ms. Uh, McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. Please raise your right hand, Mr. James. Do you swear or affirm that the te I think of the right? Do you sw swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. Thank you. you may lower your hand. Um, um with respect to this matter, um, sir, I'm gonna go over some rights that you have that you're gonna be giving up by entering into this plea. Stop me if you have any questions or if you feel like you need to speak with your attorney again, okay? Okay. You have, the right to have a, you have the right to have a trial by a jury at which time you can call witnesses to speak for you. You can also get an order by me to have those witnesses uh, come to court. I to speak here okay. and any and all witnesses that are called against you. You have the right to 
Can you hear me? No, no, I can't because they're talking over there. Okay, where where are you at in, in our lobby? Yeah. Okay. I'm a move. Okay. Okay, what you say? Okay, I'll start uh, almost from the beginning. You have the right to see, hear, and hear any and all witnesses called against you by the prosecution. You have the right to be a witness for yourself, or you could remain silent. If you did choose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. You have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand you're going to be giving up all those rights or you're not going to be having a trial of any sort? Yes, Your Honor. Do you also understand that there's no automatic right to appeal this decision? So the decision you're making today, in all likelihood, is going to stick with you. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And do you also understand um, that if you were on probation for well or on on April the 13th of 2023, when this offense occurred, you could be in violation of that probation, parole, or bond. Were you on any of those? No. No. All right. And then um, finally, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could have immigration consequences. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. To the charges of... Malicious destruction of personal property, 200 or more, and assault or assault and battery. How do you plead? Plead guilty. Has anyone promised you anything other than what we've placed on the record today to get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Has anyone threatened you in any way, shape, or form? No, Your Honor. So on April 13th, 2023, you at the vicinity of that was in March. Five North Rosewood here in Ypsilanti Township, sir. Yes, Your Honor. And at that time, did you maliciously destroy or injure a Ford Focus belong to somebody named Mr. Were one of the Pittmans? Yes, Your Honor. Do you stipulate, counsel, that the value was between two hundred and uh, one thousand dollars? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And uh, did you make an assault or a battery upon Tyler Pittman at that address also? Yes, Your Honor. What'd you do? I really don't remember. I didn't. They hit, as far as I know, they hit me first. And Your Honor, can I get a break from this, Mr. James, please? Oh, Ypsilanti Township versus Brandon Kierdorf, case number 24T00107. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Allison Miller here on behalf of Brandon Kierdorf. Mr. Kierdorf, can you state your name for the record? Brandon Kierdorf. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Kierdorf. We're here for a court trial today. Yes, Your Honor. Um, and Mr. Barnett, I just sent you an email about Mr. Kierdorf's case. Um, if we could set this for final settlement conference, but with understanding that any offers remain open, that's what we'd like to do. Mr. Barnett, is that possible? Yeah, we, can, we can do that. Okay. Um, and um, Mr. Barnett, I also sent you a letter um, that our office received from the alleged victim in this case. Do you see that as well? I do. Yes. Thank you. So I'll, I'll review that as well. Okay, and upon your review, if possible, I would want to submit um, an order for consensual contact to be in place instead of no contact once Mr. Kierdorf is um, done with his Don Farden programs, if you would be open to that, Mr. Burnett. Uh, yeah, I'll reach out to the victim okay. um, and we'll go from there. Okay, understood. Thank you.
All right. Final settlement conference will be on May 30th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Jury selection will be on June 7th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. And bond will continue. Did you get those dates, sir? Um, I'm sorry. May, would you repeat? I was not ready. I, sorry. May 30th? Mm-hmm. At 11 a.m. for the jury selection. I mean, for the final settlement conference. Uh, yes, thank and you. And then the next, the next date would be June 7th. And that would be in person, sir. The other one is on Zoom still. Okay? We, yes, we also had an... Um, I've reinstated my weed card. I was hoping to change the terms of my bond uh, to not include um, abstinence uh, from marijuana. I, I know it's legal. Um, I have might have residuals in my system. And so I, I've reinstated my medical card on um, March 22nd this year. I'm sorry, Mr. Kierdorf. That was the last matter I did want to address for the court. Your Honor, I sent um, to the court this morning an email I received from Mr. Kierdorf um, just stating that his it was approved. Um, is there some, would the court like to see anything further for that issue? Mr. Barnett, first of all, um, was is that an issue in this case? Uh, give me one moment here. I'm sorry. Uh, certainly the certainly alcohol is an issue in this case I, I don't see anything specifically referencing marijuana or thc as long as you have a letter of necessity then it is approved Right, you're all set, sir. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Have a good day. Ypsilanti Township versus Mauricio Weatherspoon, 2014-00022, as well as um, 23S785, and they are both here for pre-trials today. Great, my deputy for the people. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Mauricio Weatherspoon. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Weatherspoon. Please state your name for me. Mauricio Weatherspoon. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I am unaware of where Mr. Weatherspoon is. But I do know that I just communicated with Mr. Barnett this morning with an offer, so I was going to ask for a one-week adjournment to talk to Mr. Weatherspoon about that offer. Uh, I just came back from the hotel. I was at the, the courtroom. We ain't know. Yeah, of course. So I got to Zoom. Okay. I did not know Mr. Weatherspoon was out of custody, so I was unable to contact him. I'll adjourn it to April 15th. April 15, 2024, at 10, at 9 a.m., sir. Your bond is continued on both of these. Uh, do you want to go into a breakout room with him briefly so you can get the contact info? Yes, thank you. Oh, let me get some pen and paper. Mr. Weatherspoon, you're going to go directly in. When you get back, you should be in the room with her, okay? Excuse me, can you repeat that? You should be in the room with her. When Yes. You should, you'll see her in just one moment. Yes.
Court will recall the matter of Ypsilanti Township versus Kenneth Fortin, case number 23T00790. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Davi Lebo on behalf of Mr. Fortin. Mr. Fortin, could you say your name? Kenneth Fortin. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I did have a break in with Mr. Fortin. Mr. Fortin did acknowledge to me that he was residing with the complaining witness, and he is now prepared to admit that to the court. Mr. Fortin, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may lower your hand. It's my understanding, sir, that you plan to admit to violating your bond conditions by uh, maintaining contact with the um, complaining witness despite this court's orders and that you were in fact living with her. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. I find that there's a factual basis for the plea that has been willingly and knowingly made. Are you satisfied, Mr. Barnett? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. The defense is likewise satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. So, um, what would you like to say on your, your client's behalf? Your Honor, Mr. Fordon tells me that Upon his release from the jail in this matter, he was homeless. He was feeling very scared and desperate, and he received a phone call from the complaining witness telling him that he could return. He tells me that he acknowledged that he, you know, very significantly messed up and did the wrong thing by violating the sports condition. He should never have taken that phone call, and he certainly never should have gone over there. He acknowledges that completely, and I believe he's prepared to make that same statement to the court himself. Mr. Fordon, what would you like to say, sir? Then you I'm, don't have to say anything. I'm I'm really messed up about I I'm really messed up from my mistake, and I just no one was there to help my. I mean, my dad was told me to stay. Uh, I watched the house, and somebody broke broke into the house. And by that, I got a home invasion and I got hit over the head. And I was trying, can I say one thing real quick? Um, My mom's urn, okay, was being taken out of the house. And they broke the door, the window. They were taking stuff out. And I was just trying to stop them. And I know I wasn't supposed to be there. And I didn't have no place to go. And I was freezing cold. And I tried to find places to go, but I couldn't find it. And it's not her fault. It's my fault. I shouldn't have been at the address like you told me, but I, I, I just didn't have nowhere. I was just scared. I didn't know where to go. And you, you probably would have done the same thing for your mom's urn too if something happened like that. You're not here because of the urn here. You're here because you were still living with. The I know. I, I, I broke. I, I admit that, and I apologize for that. And I, I. I am saying I'm guilty, and I'm 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 on the subject that for the punishment for it for what I did. Mr. Barnum. Uh, well, Your Honor, obviously we have an assaultive crime. We have a situation where we need to protect the victim and keep the, these parties apart, and he's not complying with that requirement. Uh, so that's concerning. I I would leave any modification of the bond or, or, or sanction in your discretion. Have you spoken to the complaining witness in this case? Is she requesting contact? I have not, Your Honor. Anything else you want to say, Mr. Lebo? Your Honor, I do think that it's at least bears mentioning that in the the report in this matter, there's a note the complaining witness did not appear to indicate that she did not want the contact and that she was surprised that Mr. Ford was arrested. So while that certainly doesn't in any way excuse Mr. Ford's violation of the court's order, I believe it is relevant to the bond consideration. Thank you. Does he have some place to stay yet? Unfortunately, Your Honor, he does not. I did ask him about in the breakout room. He tells me he does not at the moment have another place to stay. He did tell me he's experiencing some difficulties getting medication he needs at the jail. 
is your request on his behalf today? Your Honor, I would ask that the court could consider releasing Mr. Gordon on a hotspot tether. Say something real quick. It's up to you, attorney, sir. Mr. Ford, and I'd advise you not to say anything regarding the underlying issue in this case, which is the events that happened that led to the charge being brought. No, no, that's not that. I was the the um. I don't. I I, I don't. I don't have money to pay for the tether. I'm on disability. Full disability, and I. Yeah, I uh, heard that they, they cost a lot of money. I didn't know, so that's why I was trying to figure it out. So you don't want to be released on tether? Um, I, Mr. I, Mr. Ford, I'm sure you would. You rather be released on hotspot tether and owe the money for the tether, or remain in jail and not owe the money for the tether? How much does the tether usually cost? GPS today is $10 per day. $10 today per day. And they let you do payment arrangements? Yes, sir. Okay. Um I, if I deny the the uh the tether, they'll keep me in here for until the court date, right? Yes, I will. And they'll just release me after it's dismissed. If it is dismissed, that is correct. Okay. I, I, I'd rather do that instead because I can't afford the tether. I don't have enough money to do to pay the tether. Okay. So what is the next? Court date you would request, Mr. Lido? Your Honor, I was requesting a final settlement conference. Those are not until May 30th at this point. Your Honor, I would ask the court to permit Mr. Ford's release in the tether, and if Mr. Ford chooses to accept that opportunity, he can do so. If not, I suppose he can certainly decline that and remain in jail. Mr. Ford, I would ask you to, I would urge you to do that. I, I won't have nowhere to go. I mean, the only thing I have is a friend, but he's on the same street, but he's the second house and she's way, way down. Can I see uh, counsel in a breakout room?
All right, Mr. Fortin, what I'm going to do is put this over for one week until next week. Um, and in the interim time period, I guess there'll be some contact with the complaining witness to see if she wants to have uh, consensual contact. I didn't hear you, Jess. Can you repeat that over? Because it was on mute. You can hear me even yeah. if it's on mute, sir. Yeah, I can hear I just can't hear you. But what I was saying was I'm going to put it over for one week so that um, they can reach out to the complaining witness to see if she wants contact. And then I guess the other thing is Mr. Lebo might talk to you about whether you want to do this as a bench trial to give you a, a closer date in the event that uh, he can't, she can't be reached or she doesn't indicate she wants contact. Okay. What, is that, uh, what does that mean, ma'am? I'll let that... you speak with your attorney who can explain it to you better. Okay, okay? thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're done, right? This matter will be adjourned to April 8th. You're going to go in with your attorney. Okay. April 8th, 2024 at 9 a.m. I'm going to leave the bond that says for now. Bond is continued. Um, actually, no, I can't do that. Bond is denied right now. So we're going to set bond in this case at $25,000 cash or surety. Um, can I ask a question real quick? What, what, uh, what kind of bond is it? A private bond? Mm -hmm. Or Mr. Ford, and she's about to have you talk to me, so I can. Okay, thank you. State of Michigan versus, I think this is Mr. Lebo's case. Um, can someone handle the uh, James Cameron or Cameron James matter? I'll give you a chance to look it up to see if it's something that you can handle or not. Your Honor, you said it's the Cameron James matter that's going to be called. Yes. Is is he coming back on that? Is that a recall? Yes, it's a recall. Okay. He was in the middle of a plea. It might be better for Mr. Lebo to finish it. It might be so, Your Honor. I don't see um, notes about the plea. I'm not sure I'd be able to step in. All right. Thank you. Do, were you trying to say something, Mr. James? Uh, no. No. <clears throat> I was just unmuted. All right, we'll wait till your attorney comes back and then we can finish your plea, okay? Okay. Thank you. It appears we don't have anything else to call. How about the no-shows? Okay. There was a phone number that was just allowed into the uh, main uh, courtroom. Uh, it ends in 2829. If you could unmute and tell us your first and last name. Hey, uh, how you doing? Uh, my name is Kendrick McBride. Thank you. Good. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right, you're gonna be waiting for a minute, so you need to go into a breakout room with Mr. Lebo when he comes and we finish this next case. So just hold on, and we'll put you into a breakout room, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. It appears. Okay. Do we have other failure to appear? Oh, All right, this is appears to be a failure to appear. Ypsilane Township versus Brandon Scott, 23T00817. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Brandon Scott. Mr. Scott is actually in custody at the Washington County Jail, so we need him brought out. It's not on our list, but one moment, please. We'll try to get them to bring him if he's there. If they did not put him on the list of people who are in custody. Okay. I just saw him this morning. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Ms. White, are you still there? I am. Can you in a breakout room with Mr. George Castellian? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Leslie Thomas, which matter are you here for, please? We don't have you on our docket today. Yes, hi, good morning, Judge. Um, I am here for, I, will, I would like to speak to a prosecutor um, for Kendrick McBride. Your Honor, if I may, uh, Ms. Thomas, thanks so much for coming today. I can't talk right now while the docket's going on. We can get in touch with you after court today, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can go ahead and log off. We'll we'll call you. We do not actually have anything else to call yet, Ms. McDuffie. Um, as soon as Mr. Lebo comes back, we can handle the Cameron James matter, but we know his return. Ms. Moeller, are you able to handle the Brandon Scott matter? Your Honor, sorry, I'm just finding his notes. Just a moment. All right, thank you. Yes, Your Honor, I can. All right, thank you. Court will call the matter of Ypsilanti Township versus Brandon Scott, 23T00817. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Allison Muller here on behalf of Brandon Scott. Mr. Scott, can you have them unmute you and please state your name for the record, please? Oh, it looks like you are unmuted. I'm sorry. Uh, Brandon Scott, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Scott was before the magistrate on March 25th, at which time he was arraigned on a bench warrant for felon to appear. Um, there was also a bond violation and apparently he still has not addressed from January 9th because he didn't show up for his January 11th um, court date. So he looks like 
He also missed his January 25th court date. I can't tell on that one. Or no, he um he had a bench warrant at that time because he had violated the terms of his bond. So Mr. Scott has a lot going on. It appears that with respect to the bond violation, he tested positive for alcohol on December the 15th. And then on December the 18th, he missed the test. And then on January 4th, he also missed the test. So oh, he missed his court date on January 11th after being arraigned on January 9th. And then he had those bond violations that were still outstanding. Okay, Your Honor, and I do apologize. I didn't see the, the background of the case. Um, do, so we would need to move, move forward with an admission today or set the, the bond violations for a hearing? That's correct. And maybe it maybe it is something that I believe this was a Mr. Ms. White matter. Maybe she does need to handle it. Mr. Scott, where did you and Ms. White speak about the bond violations yeah. ahead of today? I'm oh. sorry. Where was yeah, today? Oh, um, uh, sorry. Just a moment, Mr. Scott. I thought Ms. White was back, but she took him into the into her office instead. Um, but yes, he did speak with her today. Do you know how you'd like to move forward, Mr. Scott, with the bond violations? Do you want to admit to those violations, or would you like to speak with me or Ms. White further? Uh, well, with the bond violation was uh. Where um I where I'm sir, um I'll just I'll just pass this for a moment until Ms. White comes back. Okay. I apologize, Your Honor. It's okay. The court will recall the matter of the state of Michigan versus Cameron James, case number 23S00514. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Assistant public defender Don Leba for Mr. James. Mr. James, could you unmute and speak your name, sir? Cameron James. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Lebo, we were in the middle of a plea and I believe we had gotten to the plea on the um, assault and battery before Mr. Uh, Cameron needed to speak with you. Mr. James, please speak with you. Yes, Director, and I was able to review some videos, Mr. James, that I believe refresh, refreshed his recollection. Mr. James, you're still under oath, sir. Is it true that you reviewed some videos and your re recollection has been refreshed at this time? Yes, Your Honor. All right. All right, sir, at some point in time, did you assault or batter at Mr. Tyler Pittman? Yes, I, I walked up to him and took a swing at him. Okay. Thank you. I find that there's a, a knowing and willing admission to the uh, malicious destruction of personal property, 200 or more, but less than 1,000, and also the assault and battery. Are you satisfied that I met the court rule, Ms. Um, McDuffie? The people are satisfied, Your Honor. Defense is likewise satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, we'll schedule the sentencing in this matter on April 29th, 2024 at 10 o'clock a.m. Mr. James, you need to make and keep an appointment with the probation department. I'm gonna give you a phone number to write down, okay? Okay. And this number is for anybody else that may need to go and talk to someone at probation. Uh, can I get a piece of paper? Sure. Okay, what's the phone number? 7346, I'm sorry, 734-483-7336. Please call them tomorrow after nine o'clock a.m. so that they can schedule your uh, appointment to have a pre-sentence investigation report done, okay? Okay. And um, I'll see you back here on April the 29th at 10 o'clock a.m. 
hereby discontinued. Have a good day, okay? You too. Bye-bye. What time was it? At 10 o'clock. Oh, 10 o'clock. On Zoom, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. State of Michigan versus Lorenzo Melendez, case number 23S00378. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Assistant Public Defender Allison Muller here on behalf of Lorenzo Melendez. Um, Mr. Melendez, can you state your name for the record, please? Uh, yes, good morning. My name is Lorenzo Melendez. Good morning, Mr. Melendez. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. All right, we're here for a review today. It looks like Mr. Melendez is doing very well. Anything you want to say on behalf of your client, Ms. Muller? Um, Your Honor, not at this time, unless Mr. Melendez has anything he'd like to say to the court, but I do not at this time. Anything from you, Ms. Ms. McDuffie? Nothing from you, All right, Mr. Uh, Melendez, thank you for doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're making your payments, attending your 12-step meetings, testing. You're in complete compliance. Anything you want to say? Uh, no, not at all. I'm uh, doing very well right now. I have uh, no problems here. Good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being compliant. Um, your next review date is going to be um, on June 21st, 2024 at 9 15 a.m that's going to be with the probation agent so hopefully you won't have to see me again unless you're still uh unless something comes up that you shouldn't be doing you won't have to see me again take care of yourself and luck to you okay sounds good thank you uh will that be in person i believe it is on zoom it is on zoom okay and, sounds good. Uh, she should you should reach out to her and she'll give you that Zoom information. It's going to be a different Zoom number than this one. Okay? okay. Yep. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the court will recall the matter of Ypsilanti Township versus Brandon Scott, 23T. 23T0078. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Brandon Scott. Thank you. Mr. Scott, please state your name again. Brandon Martin Scott. Thank you. All right, Ms. White, um, I had explained to Ms. Muller when she was trying to handle this matter and not understanding the intricacies of it, that Mr. Scott is here before this court because he failed to attend um, his uh, pretrial and bench warrant um, bond violation hearing before the court on this court, on me, on January 11th at um, 9 a.m., and prior to that, he already had a bond violation that was outstanding. And that bond violation, Mr. Scott had failed to, well, he tested positive for alcohol on December 15th, and then he missed a test on December 18th, and he missed the test on January 4th. What would your client like to do at this time? Of course, he's entitled to have a hearing on these matters, at which time if it is shown that he violated the terms of his bond and he could have his bond revoked. What would your client like to do? We did talk about his missed hearing. Uh, for the last hearing, we did not talk about the missed alcohol test. So, um, okay, thank you. 
I'm going to have to have Mr. Castillon uh, step out into the hallway. No, I'm getting ready to call the. I'm getting ready to call that one before he steps into the hallway. Okay, thank you. We got to get a translator. Yeah. All right, we're still spending on the translator. I will call it as soon as we get the translator. The court will call the matters of Stacy Streeter. Um, case numbers 23S00089, 18T00670. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Allison Miller here on behalf of Stacy Streeter. Stacy Streeter, please unmute your device, uh, turn on your screen, and state your name. I think she disappeared. Ms. Stacy Streeter, please unmute your device and state your name. Stacy Streeter. Thank you. All right, we're supposed to be here for sentencing and this is the third time that we've tried to do this and we still don't have an assessment in this case. Um, Your Honor, it looks like um, Mr. Lebo, I don't know if he had a chance to speak with Ms. Streeter about why that wasn't completed. Mr. Lebo, I don't break out one again. <laughs> oh, All right, I guess we'll have to pass this. Do we have a translator yet? Yeah. All right. Yes, State of Michigan versus Latanya Smith, 22 FB 1375. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Latanya Smith. Latanya Smith. Thank you. All right. I believe that we're here because Ms. Smith applied to violations. It's supposed to be an inpatient treatment. Is she there? She is still in inpatient treatment. She has had a new assessment done. It has not been sent to me yet or I believe to Ms. Johnson. So if we can get a one week adjournment for that to be done. Is she in? I'm sorry? Which inpatient treatment place is she? Home of New Vision. 
So, anything from the no, we're not. We're not no, no, nothing. Um, not really. It's just that the reason we were getting this assessment, um, I believe, was because there, we had a little bit of discussion about Miss Smith not um wanting to be in transitional housing. If I'm not mistaken, the assessment was kind of intended to support that argument, or is is that accurate? What? Well, I think we are hoping that maybe she would not have to go into transitional housing. I know your honor had said transitional housing or possibly um, in custody. So we were hoping that maybe the assessment would support outpatient treatment. I see Ms. Johnson. How long did Ms. Johnson you have something you wanted to say? I did um, reach out to her um, therapist this morning because um, I wasn't sure what exactly we were doing to, for today's hearing. I have not heard back from them. I, I um, was under the assumption that Ms. White was going to have a new assessment done so we could figure out what the next step was for Ms. Smith. So I'm just waiting to hear back from Ms. Smith's um, therapist to see what the next step is. But I believe that the thought was that she was going to go to transitional based off of her prior history with her positive results. So what is your request today, Ms. White? We are hoping for an adjournment with the hope being that the assessment will support outpatient treatment. How long do you need, Ms. White? The assessment has been done, correct, Ms. Smith? Yes. I just don't okay. know when they're going to send everything over. Still two weeks to April 15th. Thank you. April 15th, 2024 at 10 a.m. Is it on Zoom? Yes, it is, ma'am. Do I still have my warrant? You do, ma'am. So that warrant can't get left off? Nope, not until we have the assessment. You stay there at your seat, then, you, then you're all set. You need to stay there at your treatment now. Pardon me? They don't come to pick people up at the treatment center, so you just stay where you are and you're all set. So stay here too. Okay, I got Zoom back on the 15th. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, Liliana. Could you uh, please um, raise your right hand to be sworn? I'm um, yes. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will translate from English to Spanish and Spanish to English to the best of your ability? And yes, I do. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you. Credentials on the floor, please. Place your credentials on the record floor, please. Okay, sorry. This is Liliana, ID number 220145. Thank you. The court will call the case of the state of Michigan versus Walter Bojorge Castilian, case number 24S00106. No lo hice de su intérprete en español. Este sería el caso del estado de Michigan contra el señor Walter Castellán, número de caso 24S00106. Prosecutor Rachel McDuffie for the people. Y también en la llamada la abogada fiscal en Rachel McDuffie de parte del estado. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Walter Jorge Castillo. Y también la de, las asistente defensor público, la abogada Sandra White a favor de uh, Walter. Uh, sorry, I missed the, the first last name. Jorge. Jorge. Oh, thank you. And the last name Castellan, you said? Or Jorge Castellan. Okay, thank you. Um, sir, could you please state your name for the record? 
Eh, señor Volte, ¿podría por favor para la grabación decir su nombre completo? Walter Bojorge Castellón. Walter Bojorge Castellón. Thank you. We have for Petra. We are here for a pre-trial today. Estamos aquí para una audiencia previa al juicio el día de hoy. Unfortunately, we did not have a number for Mr. Jorge Castillo until today, so we are asking for an, an adjournment to speak with him further. Lamentablemente, antes del día de hoy, no teníamos un número de, de contacto del señor Bo Jorge para poder contactarlo, así que estamos pidiendo de que se aplace o se cambie la audiencia del día de hoy para otro día para tener oportunidad de hablar con él en más detalle. Ok. Anything from you, Ms. McDuffie, on this? No objection to the adjournment. I know that the victim was present um, in the courtroom physically, and I believe she has a request for, she, um, well, let me just, one thing at a time. I'm sorry. No objection to the adjournment first. De parte de la, de parte de la abogada ante fiscal Matufi, de parte del Estado, no tenemos objeción en que se pida que se aplace esta audiencia. As to the complaining witness. Your Honor, as to the witness, um, I believe she showed up in court requesting contact with the children. En cuanto a lo que tiene que ver con la, el testigo de esta queja, creo que se presentó en la corte pidiendo tener contacto con los niños. His bond conditions do not prevent contact with the children, so there's no issue with third party uh, facilitation of that. De acuerdo a las de restricciones o condiciones de la fianza, no previenen de que haya algo de contacto con los niños, mientras sea de por una parte terciaria que se lleve a cabo. With respect to um, the witness herself, she, I believe, wanted contact as well. I, of course, would object to that, but I'll leave it to the court's discretion. También en cuanto a la testigo, también está solicitando lo que es tener contacto. En, no, nosotros veríamos algo de objeción con esto, pero lo dejamos a discreción de la corte que decidan en cuanto a esto. Given that she came to make that request and we are not able to get separate interpreters at the last minute. Debido a, a que ella ha hecho esta solicitud y no pudimos obtener servicios de dos diferentes in, intérpretes antes de esto. So I'm passing on her request to the court. Así que estoy pasando, comunicando esta solicitud a la corte. Anything from you, Ms. White, with respect to the no contacts? A, algo para usted, señorita White, en lo que tiene que ver con la solicitud de no tener contacto. I did speak briefly with the complaining witness this morning by text. Yo brevemente hablé con la testigo de, de, esta, de este cargo, de esta queja, esta mañana, brevemente por medio de mensaje de texto. I do believe she wants contact, but again, that was without an interpreter, so I will leave that to the court. Yo creo que sí, está, quiere o está solicitando tener contacto, pero como se ha dicho, esto fue sin usar los servicios de un intérprete, así que también lo dejaría yo en manos de la corte. Free trial in this matter will be adjourned to April 22nd, 2024 at 9 a.m. Esta audiencia previa al juicio se va a aplazar o se va a volver a agendar para la fecha del 22 de abril de este año 2024 a las 9 a.m. The bond will be modified to no unwanted contact. El de condiciones de la fianza se modificaría para que ahora diga de no tener contacto que, que no se quiera tener. 
And the do not go to will be lifted. Y se levantaría o se retiraría la, la condición de, de no ir a esa dirección que estaba. Okay. We'll see you back here on April 22nd at 9. Lo, lo volvemos a ver aquí entonces el 22 de abril a las 9. Okay. You're all set, sir. Have a good day. Es sería todo. Que tenga buen día. Thank you, Madam Interpreter. You were all set. Have a good day. Day of no services. Have a good day as well. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. The court will call the matter of the state of Michigan versus Kelly White, case number 23S00372. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Raymond Burkett on behalf of Ms. White. And Ms. White, would you be kind enough to identify yourself to this honorable court? Kelly White. Thank you. All right. Um, in this particular matter, Apparently, Ms. White was released to a treatment program from the jail, um, but this court did not actually sign any documentation for that. So as to what her bond conditions were while she was out, that was not a part of what was, no one conferred with the court with respect to that. So uh, she was simply released. Um, and I have documentation here saying that we don't have an ROI Yet, and Ms. White is due to be released from um, from the program um, on April the 4th. Your Honor, I think I sent you that information in terms of uh, responding to an email I got from the prosecutor's office. I mean, from the probation department this morning. Uh, I wanted you to know that uh, they plan to release her on the 4th and to make you aware of that. Uh, because that was one of your major concerns. Now, just so the court is fully aware, I contacted the, the people, the um, Don's firm, and requested that they send you a report uh, uh, last week. And I told that my office spoke with the prosecutor's office. As late as Friday, we called them again. And they said they were sending you a copy of, of what our treatment plan was. And that uh, then I spoke with Ms. White Saturday, or was it Easter Saturday? And she said that she had signed all the forms to release her treatments to you, to me, and to the probation department. Uh, I've not received anything from anyone at this juncture. Uh, so I wrote you that email just so you know exactly what I've done and where, and where we stand with this. Thank you. And, and, and the treatment that she's receiving is inpatient treatment. I mean, she can't leave that. Right. Ms. McDuffie? 
quick, Your Honor, the reason I reached out to the court was because Miss um, White was released from custody on March 7th. And when we got the report from Community Corrections, they mentioned no GPS tether violations. And I tried to confirm, well, she should still have the scram tether on because she was in custody because of the scram tether violations. And they said, no, she doesn't. And she doesn't have, essentially, she hasn't tested since then. So I did not know if the court intended for her to completely stop testing, anticipating that she was going into treatment, because we've had people drink while they were in treatment as well. So I just, it was a little bit odd to me that her testing was completely discontinued for the past month almost. Um, I do understand she's in treatment now, but um, there's nothing, there's the community corrections confirmed there's no order, no Soberlink, no ETG, no scram, no nothing. As I just indicated, no one consulted with me before her release. I normally sign a form releasing mm -hmm. her and that did not occur in this case. She was simply released. Um, okay. And I'm not, we're not sure how that happened yet. Um, so the court didn't issue any orders because they just released her to the spirit. Having okay. said that, um, the reality is that when people get generally released to treatment programs, I don't keep scram tethers on generally speaking, when they're in inpatient because they're tested there. And I presume that they know what they're doing in those treatment programs. When the testing results come back positive, it's usually because they tested positive uh, while they were in the program and somehow we were notified of that. Um, but I do generally do a GPS tether, which I would have probably done um, had she, had they actually notified the court prior to her release. Having said all that, the bigger issue right now is that we don't have any indication of how she's doing in the program or what's going on. So we don't have that additional information that we would normally have because there's no ROI on file or no ROI that we know of to give us the information. And she's due to be released on April 4th. So, um, she will be placed onto a scram tether upon her release from that programming. What would you like to do with respect to the um, pretrial today? Mr. Burkett. I think the pretrial, uh, with all due respect, uh, to you, Your Honor, should be adjourned. Now, I just so the court is fully aware, I spoke with Donald's firm, and they did tell me that they had sent you a report. Uh, I, at least that's what I thought they said, but I've not gotten a report from them yet. Now, I, it's my understanding, Your Honor, uh, that she had been testing um, the whole time that she was there. I had no idea that they that the jail released her because she, what you told us that you would release her to go to an inpatient treating program and and get the results. Uh, I had no idea that uh, she was released without that order being confirmed. So I, I would ask for an adjournment because I'm in out of position to argue anything without seeing a copy of their report from Don Farm and without the sign of report and the probation department uh, having that report. It appears that Ms. Rob is indicating she hasn't seen anything. They're requesting an adjournment to get that assessment, but she's due to be released from that program on April the 4th. So at this point, I'm gonna order that she be placed on the scram and GPS tether once she's released. Anything else that you're requesting at this time, Ms. McDuffie? No, um, nothing from the people, Your Honor. Are you available on April 22nd, Mr. Burkett? I will make myself available. April 22nd, 2024, at 9 a.m. for the next pretrial. Okay, and can I... Uh... I assume you're going to allow me to do it by Zoom? Yes. Okay. That's why you need to call me immediately if you're up on your... 
Okay, I sure will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yana. Yana, I try to have a good day. I'm sorry? I said, oh. try to have a good day. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Burkett. Thank you. You have a good day as well. Yana, I'm going to try to do that too. <laughs> Court will call the cases of Kendrick McBride, case numbers 24S00120, 24W0044, I'm sorry, 24W000440, 0040, ANC, um, 07W179370, 07W17, Nine eight eight nine zero eight W one eight three eight eight four B zero nine one nine one seven two two A B that wait one more uh, two more nineteen W zero zero seven hundred A and B. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Assistant Paul Burnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Bug Defender Davi Lebo for Mr. McBride. Mr. McBride, can you please unmute and state your name, sir? Mr. McBride, please state your name, sir. Okay, for whatever reason, we can't hear you. I think you tried that before. We're going to put you in a breakout room and see if, uh, I mean, into, a waiting, into the waiting room and bring you back and see if that works too. To fix things. Yeah, Kendrick McBride. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Mr. Kendrick McBride, please hit star six. I think he's on two devices. We're gonna merge your we're gonna merge merge them together because he keeps trying to talk up there on the iPhone. Oh uh, Mr. McBride, are you on two devices? Can you nod your head up, up or yes or no? Are you on two devices, sir? You, you you turned off the screen. Okay, can you can you close out the phone, please? Hang up the phone. All right. Now we're gonna put you into a breakout room and bring you back and see if that works. Into the just don't hang up that, that one. Is that better? Yes. Now we can hear you. Okay. 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 Please state Please. your name. Kendrick McBride. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Um, we're here on a number of matters, as I just called. Um, one of those, um, let me just say, in the 24S0120, uh, Mr. I got a progress report here that should be actually labeled a, a violation report because Mr. McBride was referred to community corrections for testing, but he has failed to appear or test. So he is in violation of his bond conditions. Sir, you're entitled to have a hearing on that, at which time if it is found that you're in violation of your bond conditions, your bond could be revoked. Do you understand, sir? Yes. Um, yes. The the um the office is please, closed. Please don't early. say it. Please don't say anything yet. Um, Mr. Lebo, have you had a chance to talk to your client about the bond violation and um in that matter? And what would you like to do on these other matters? As well? Yeah, I'd like to have just a brief additional break with Mr. McBride regarding the bond violation. All 
Ms. White, may I call with Ms. Scott? Oh, Mr. Scott. Okay. Mm -hmm. The court will call recall the matter of Ypsilanti Township versus Brandon Scott, 23T00817. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender <clears throat> Sandra White on behalf of Brandon Scott. Mr. Scott, if you can get them to unmute you. Yes. If you could state your name. Brandon Martinez Scott. Thank you. I have spoken with Mr. Scott about his missed court date and the positive alcohol screens. He would like to admit to those violations. Thank you, sir. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you yes, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You may lower your hand. Sir, is it true that you violate the terms of your bond? Well, first of all, you understand you have a right to have a hearing on these matters. Sir, are you going to waive your right to have those hearings? Mr. Scott? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand you have a right to have a hearing on these matters and you're going to waive your right to have that hearing? No, I don't want to waive it. Okay, he does not want to waive it. Mr. Scott, you said that you wanted to admit that you did miss the hearings and that you did have a positive alcohol screen? Yes. You have to waive your right to the hearings. That's what you want to do. Oh, uh, yes, yes. All right. I'm sorry about that. So on December the 15th, 2023, did you test positive for alcohol during a PBT test, sir? Yes, ma'am. And you missed testing on December 18th and January 4th. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. You also failed to show uh, for court on January 11th? Yes, ma'am. All right. I find that there's a knowing and willing admission to the violation of the bond. Are you satisfied, Ms., uh, Mr. Barnett? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. Is there something you want to say on behalf of your client with respect to that? Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Mr. Scott did say that as far as the missing the court day, he was at the Delana Center and he just believed that he did not get his mail. So he does apologize for that. And as for the miss, as for the positive alcohol screening, there was something uh, to do with his grandmother, I believe a death. Is that correct, Mr. Scott? Yes, ma'am. And although it is not a good excuse, it is no. why he drank. No. Thank you. What would you like to do with respect to the pretrial, please? He would like to set that for a final settlement conference. And if your honor could also see, he had a bond posted, but he is unsure in which case that bond was posted. There was a confusion. One moment, please. You said he had a bond posted? He thought that the bail bond had paid $1,300, but the bond was actually $2,500. Is that correct? But he's unsure if the bail bondsman actually posted the bond. There's no bond that we have that's been posted. Okay, then he would be asking if the court would consider a PR bond. Mr. Barnett. Uh, Your Honor, I mean, it's concerning that he didn't show up and he tested positive. Um, so I, I guess I would leave it in your discretion. Well, not only did he show up, not show up on January 11th, but he also didn't show up on December 27th. The court is not willing to do a PR bond under the, fa under the conditions that he's failed to appear on two separate occasions, and he's testing positive and missing his test. No, yes, I'm not willing to do that. Can we put another one on April 25th? Is that what I will give him a final settlement conference on April 25th. Eleven a.m. with the jury selection of May third, two thousand twenty-four. 
at 8.30 a.m. The bond will continue. Do you understand, Mr. Scott? She is not going to give you a bond. That's not true. His bond is twenty five. I'm sorry, your bond is twenty five hundred dollars. My fault. How much is it? Twenty five thousand cash assurity, sir. You said it was twenty five thousand cash assurity. I will Just do for it. A, I'll do a ten percent if you think you can come up with twenty five hundred dollars. We will discuss it further, Mr. Scott. Okay. The court will recall the matters of the state of Michigan versus Stacy Streeter, 23S00089, as well as 18T00670. Personal definitely for the people. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Dobby Levo on behalf of Ms. Streeter. Ms. Streeter, could you state your name? Yes, Stacy Streeter. Thank you, Ms. Streeter. All right, you wanted to talk to Ms. Streeter? Your Honor, um, I was not aware of the case was previously called. I believe I was in a breakout room. Oh. We passed it for you. I That's what we passed it for. We passed it for you because you had spoken to Ms. Streeter before, and it was kind of more of a convoluted matter than... Ms. Muller was aware of. Ms. Streeter has not provided us with a copy of her assessment yet, and we've been here three times. Yes, Your Honor, I do see that in the latest report from probation that probate that that Victory has confirmed that she is in treatment there. So I believe that Ms. Streeter has been in contact with them and asked them to provide the assessment, and that for whatever reason they haven't done so. I can certainly reach out to them myself after court today. But the information I have with my as well as my understanding from the probation report is that it appears that Ms. Streeter has been attempting to get Victor to turn over the records. And for reasons unknown to me, they have not done so. Ms. McDuffie? Your Honor, I um I understand that this facility has not transmitted this information, but I thought that Ms. Streeter was asked to get her own copy. She was. Can I speak? It's up to yes. your turn. He said yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make it clear that I have um, signed multiple releases with Victory. There's been some type of issue as far as like um, stating exactly who to release it to. Um, they would not give me a copy. It's got to be requested. Um, so it's, as far as I know, it's been um, released to Agent Straub now, and she should be able to get it um, upon request. Well, Ms. Drive did speak with them and they still haven't given it to her. So I'm not going to continue to do this. Phone charger. I'm out of court. Your Honor, perhaps Ms. Streeter needs to be able to get an assessment at a different facility. Sentencing will be on April 22nd, 2024 at um, 11 a.m. in person. Ms. Streeter, you either have an assessment done and over to the agent by then, or we'll just do this from you being in custody. You understand, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. We'll see you then. Bond is continued. It's in person, just so you know. Okay, thank you.
show causes adjourned to then also. Your Honor, with regard to the show cause on the 670 matter, I did see in JS that that has been paid off. Thank you, Mr. Lebo. If that is uh, confirmed, we'll uh, post the case out. Thank you. The court will recall all of the Kendrick McBride matters. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? I can. I can. Please. Uh, Kendrick Sharon McBride. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McDuffie, you move it. Sorry about that. Rachel McDuffie for the people. <clears throat> Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Davi Lee on behalf of Mr. McBride. Thank you. All right, Mr. Um, Lebo, you wanted to pass this so you could talk to Mr. McBride? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. McBride will plead guilty to the bond violation with an explanation. Mr. McBride, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Are you, um, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You may lower your hand. Yep. Um... That's all done. Um, Mr. McBride, is it true, uh, sir, that you failed to show up to community corrections and test as you were ordered? Uh, yes, I did fail. M Mr. McBride, I'll provide the explanation. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I find that there's a knowing will and admission to the violation. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? People are satisfied. Defense is likewise satisfied. Thank you. Explanation? Your Honor, Mr. McBride tells me, and I do see this confirmed on the report from Community Corrections, that he's released after Community Corrections had closed on Thursday. He tells me that he did attempt to go to Community Corrections on a Friday, but he discovered that day they closed early at 1130. Obviously, Mr. McBride should have checked into that to make sure he was going to get there before he closed, and he does acknowledge failing to do that. He does tell me that he attempted to go there over the weekend and that they were closed over the weekend. He, but he does tell me he went there this morning and that he has set up an intake appointment for this week, and he has shown me a business card that he got containing that appointment information. And the intake form is also. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Um, as for the pretrial, what would you like to do? As for the pretrial, I'd like to request an adjournment to review some some body camera. It doesn't appear to be in our file yet. I'm not sure if it's been sent and simply hasn't been uploaded yet, but I would like some time in order to receive and review the body camera. Any objection? No objection. April 29th at 9 a.m. All right, and then we need to figure out a payment plan on this um, show causes, all those other matters or show causes for failure to pay. How much can your client pay per month? Mr. McBride, on the cases where you have show causes for failure to pay, is there an amount of money you'd be able to pay every month? And if so, on what uh, day of the month? I can um uh, I can pay like um a hundred dollars a month. Um on the first of every month. Okay. I'm scheduled. There's more of them are too. There's pre -haircuts. So this says pre hearing. Pre -hearing. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the 20, 2024 tickets. So we'll set you up with $100 a month on the first of the month. Is that what you said, sir? Okay. And I'm going to do something I don't usually do, which is I'm going to set those on a different date. Then I'm going to set the other matters because I don't think they need to tag along all of these cases on, on uh, every court date. So I'm going to 
schedule the next one for July 1st on those payment plan matters. And then you should, um, you should have your payment for that day, for that July 1st, already paid before you come into the courtroom, sir. Okay. And that'll be July 1st at 10 o'clock a.m. If you are making payments, like you say you're going to, then you don't need to be here on that date, on July 1st. Okay? Yes, ma'am. And then um, on the 2024 cases for the A and C ticket, you're here for pre-hearing conferences. And then on the B ticket, you're here for a uh, pre-trial. Mr. Uh, Lebo, what would your client like to do on the pre-trial? Yeah, with and regard to the... Go ahead. And with regard to the pre-trial, I'd like to request an adjournment also to the 29th. <clears throat> no objection. Be hearing conferences go to that date as well. Your Honor, as we're not appointed on the civil infractions, I'm not quite sure what Mr. McBride would like to do with those. I'm going to put them all over to the April 29th date, sir. And it sounds like you need to be trying to figure out Typically what happens, Mr. Lebo, is that the attorney tries to work out a deal that encompasses all of his cases that are open. So if you could keep those in mind, I don't know if you need to write a note for yourself, but please keep those in mind for that next court date. Certainly, Your Honor. April 29th, 2024 at 9 a.m. for those other matters. We'll see you then on, um, on all those dates, sir. Uh, both of those dates, April 29th and then July 1st, okay? All right, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to handle the in-person matter at this time. We'll be on the brief recess while we get set up for that.
scan of yellow, so the containers like a hundred different flavored like jelly beans that you can get at Costco's or Sam's. Yeah, one of those. That's like crack. session with the Honorable Lorraine C. Washington presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, the court will call the cases of the state of Michigan versus Brian Holly, case number 21M00163, as well as 21T00282. Rachel McDuffie for the people. Paul Sorry. Barnett, yeah, for the township. Sorry, there is one more. And also 22S00523. Different public defender sign to write on behalf of Brian Howard. Uh, Brian Nidale Howard. Thank you. You all may be seated. We're on a couple of matters. Um, for this uh, ticket. 